Welcome everybody to St. Patrick's Cathedral here in New York. We welcome our actual parishioners who are sitting in the pews and the many, many other virtual parishioners who have been so loyal, so generous, so kind to St. Patrick's Cathedral for all of this time that we've been in lockdown and in uh, limited uh, service to the people. Uh, today, we celebrate the memorial of St. Robert Bellarmine. The celebrant of today's Mass is His Eminence, Timothy Michael Cardinal Dolan. And we will be praying today at this Mass for Meg McNally. Later on today, Masses will be offered by the staff of the Cathedral uh, for Garrett Kennedy, Salvatore Amatuzzo, for the Archbishop of New York many years ago, um, John Cardinal Farley, Philip Berlinski, Kathleen Faint, and Francis Reagan. We will be praying for them in private masses because we only have a, a few public masses. Also in your prayers, the, some people have asked me to ask everybody to pray for. Uh, Ian and Maggie McLean uh, have just celebrated their 13, 30th anniversary on uh, September the 8th. So we wish them a happy anniversary. Also pray for Donna Jolene, who, who died on uh, July the 30th. She was a uh, wonderful lady and her family asked for prayers for her. Elise McCarthy uh, and her husband. Uh, Wesley Coddington, who is a, uh, a pastor uh, who is, had, had just received a very difficult um, diagnosis. So please pray for Reverend Wesley Coddington. In order to actively participate during the Mass, please download today's worship program on your smartphone or tablet at www.stpatrickscathedral.org slash live. We ask that you continue wearing your mask while singing. Please join in singing the first verse of the opening hymn, Come Christians, Join to Sing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Welcome to those united with us on the Catholic Channel and Catholic Faith Network and our live stream. We, uh, I'm glad you mentioned Monsignor Ritchie, Cardinal Farley, 102 years ago. He died, my predecessor. I hope 102 years from today, one of my successors will remember me on the day of my the anniversary of my death, and it's the patron saint of your, it's the feast day of your patron saint, Monsignor Ritchie, happy feast day, that we might offer this holy sacrifice of the Mass we call to mind our sins and ask for divine mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray, O oh God, who adorned the bishop, St. Robert Bellarmine, with wonderful learning and virtue, to vindicate the faith of your church grant through his intercession that in the integrity of that same faith your people may always find joy through our lord jesus christ your son who 
lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am reminding you, brothers and sisters, of, of the gospel I preached to you, which you indeed received and in which you also stand. Through it, you are also saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance to the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom who are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one born abnormally, he appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me has not been ineffective. Indeed, I have toiled harder than all of them. Not I, however, but the grace of God that is with me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach and so you believed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. Give, Give thanks, thanks to the, the Lord, Lord, for he is good. good. You are my God, and I give thanks to you. O oh my God, I extol you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is God. with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you lord a certain pharisee invited jesus to dine with him and he entered the house of the pharisee and reclined at table now there was a sinful woman in the city who learned that he was at table in the house of the pharisee Bringing an alabaster flask of ointment, she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears. And then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him that she is a sinner. Jesus said to him in reply, Simon, I have something to say to you. He said, tell me, teacher. Two people were in debt to a certain creditor. One owed 500 days wages and the other owed 50. Since they were unable to repay the debt, he forgave it for both. 
which of them will love him more? Simon said in reply, the one, I suppose, whose larger debt was forgiven. He said to him, you have judged rightly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she has bathed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet since the time I entered. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with ointment. So I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. And so he said to her, your sins are forgiven. The others at table said to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if you've ever had the chance to visit the home of Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson's home in Monticello, Virginia. It's well worth it. It's one of the great almost shrines of our, of our beloved country. And if you go into, you know how intelligent he was, how acclaimed for his erudition. Remember uh, the time that President Kennedy had a, a group in the, in the cabinet room of the leading intellectuals in America in the, into the dining room at the White House. And uh, he said, this is the greatest assembly of intellectuals that have gathered in this dining room since Thomas Jefferson ate by himself. Well, anyway, this towering intellectual, Thomas Jefferson, if you go in and see his library, you'll see prominently displayed the volumes written by Robert Bellarmine. Robert Bellarmine, the saint whose feast we celebrate today. Uh, Jefferson was fascinated. I don't know if he knew he was a Jesuit or not, a priest, a cardinal, a bishop. All he knew is that he was, he was a man of impeccable reasoning, <clears throat> especially in his writings on the relationship, on the, the duties of the state, of government. And Thomas Jefferson read him with great interest. Uh, Jefferson, of course, was convinced, as was Robert Bellarmine, of the alliance between faith and reason, faith and reason. Jefferson kind of was lopsided on the side of reason. Bellarmine was on the other side of faith, but they both believed that the two had to work together, faith and reason. It's good for us to think of that, Thomas Jefferson and St. Robert Bellarmine. There are those to, today who say the faith is over here by itself. Your religion is fine. It's very private, though. Keep it to yourself. There's others who say that all we need is reason, 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 where faith has nothing to do with it. Uh-uh. Great giants like Robert Bellarmine and Thomas Jefferson would say, we need both faith and reason. And if we don't, we're in trouble. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good will his holy church. Look with favor, O Lord, on the offerings we set upon this altar on the feast of St. Robert Bellarmine, that bestowing upon us your pardon, 
our oblations may give honor to your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on this festival of St. Robert Bellarmine, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. So with the company of angels and saints in heaven, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. <clears throat> Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As Jesus himself taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn is Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all. Let us pray. Renewed by these sacred mysteries, we humbly pray, O Lord, that following the example of St. Robert Bellarmine, we may strive to profess what he believed and to practice what he taught through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. 
For our parishioners that were unable to join us for Holy Communion, we recite the acts of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire you to receive, receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The closing hymn is Now Thank We All Our God.